What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it, well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? And can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? Well, my name is Angie Hipple, and I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm a North Carolina girl through and through, six generations back. My family is from um, the Blue Ridge Mountains. We also have a home uh, there in the mountains, so we kind of scoot back and forth between the two. And um, I'm a former school teacher. I teach music lessons, some on the side, and now I'm on a, a profound new adventure with these really cool beings that kind of sprung in on my life named Judah. Um, I'm a grandmother. I have three beautiful grandbabies and three grown kids. I'm uh, a newlywed of two years now and um, just everything in my life feels like something that I really love doing. So I'm just incredibly blessed in that way. Wonderful. Well, you don't look old enough to be a grandmother. Um, 52. <laughs> wow. Well, Half a century down. <laughs> Well, you don't look at and for some channelers, they say that doing this work actually sort of slows down their aging process a little bit. So, yeah, it's like it's like a really inexpensive facelift. You know? it's, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. It, that's why we should all be channeling, right? <laughs> right, right. And that's actually part of my story that I'll share as we go. I, um, I had been in incredible health when COVID hit and I contracted COVID from my stepson was home on spring break early in the spring of 2020 when COVID was just kind of hitting the news. And I contracted COVID and went down. I had been running three miles a day. I was really in impeccable health. And I was sick for two years, chronically ill. I, I nearly died at one point. 
And I, towards the end of that whole journey, um, when Judah showed up, I was instantly healed. I mean, with, within hours, I was completely back to my original health. It was, it was a, no less than a miracle for sure. Incredible. And when did Judah show up then? Just give us a rough time scale. So um, it was early in 2022. Mm -hmm. And I, as I said, I was at the end of two years of pretty much either being in the bed or in a recliner. Very, very sick from uh, my experience with COVID. I um, really could do nothing. I, I couldn't fulfill my wife, my roles as a wife, as a mother, as a music teacher, as a singer. That was really heartbreaking for me. I would go into my studio and try to sing, and I didn't have the strength to sing. Uh, all my roles, everything in my life, I had to just stop. And so I spent an incredible amount of time during that time meditating listening to channel messages like just like yours. I remember Louise Kay and some of those others being a real uh, grounding, powerful message, messages for me during that time. And um, so, you know, everything was just kind of at a grinding halt, lots of meditating, lots of surrendering, deep, deep, deep surrender. And, and Judah just started showing up for me. And it took me a while to pick up on what was going on. Wow. <laughs> I want to say that to begin with. Um, I had no idea how much um, that content influenced you know, your journey as well. That's incredible. But I think that was always knocking on the door in a sense. Let's kind of go back. Where mm -hmm. did this start? I mean, there must, this doesn't just appear there, does it? We, were you, was there some part of you that was open to this subject back in the day? Well, yes. I, you know, from the time I was about eight years old, um, I had a first kind of breakthrough experience with, with something that felt really powerful and blissful and loving to me. And my perception of that at the time was that it was Jesus. And perhaps it was. Um, these were kind of my earlier experiences in church. And so I had always been a really avid spiritual seeker. And I also had a lot of emotional pain as well. So I also had a tendency to medicate my emotional pain with spiritual activity, self-help books, psychology, Prozac, you know, whatever worked, I was giving it a try. So all through my young adult years, I was an avid consumer of self-help psychology and spiritual materials, mostly in the charismatic uh, and fundamentalist Christian realm at that time. And, 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 and I was very sincere in all of my seeking, but still very troubled and hurting. And I would go through rounds of depression had a lot of things to feel happy about, but it just felt like my life wasn't working. And, uh, you know, somewhere, um, it was about six or seven years ago, my, I just kind of entered this series of unfortunate events. <laughs> my dad died suddenly. I was an only child. I, I worshiped the ground he walked on. Um, he, he left me holding the bag with a family business that was providing for my mother and my children and grandchildren. It was a car business, which I knew nothing about. So I was teaching school, second grade, a room full of beautiful second graders and had this family business to try to figure out and all my grief. And then on top of that, um, my dad's longtime employee began embezzling from the business. So everything was just going to crap, you know. And at the same time in all of that, my marriage began to fall apart. I'd been married 27 years to the father of my kids. And so, you know, nothing was working anymore and I couldn't medicate with anything anymore. The busyness, the, the good stuff, the bad stuff, it was all hanging out, you know, and I just became in that time really a blank slate. I had to admit, you know, I don't really know what works. I don't know who's out there. I don't know if there's anybody out there anymore. I'm not sure. And if they are... <laughs> out there. They're not like I thought they were. <laughs> and all of my definitions and concepts are failing me now. 
And uh, I just really began to enter a really crushingly deep place of surrender. And all my egoic roles and thoughts about how life was supposed to be and what I was and what God might be, all of that was just not working anymore. So I began looking for people like these beautiful channelers that you represent and listening. And I began really getting on the bandwagon with what I felt were enlightened beings, trying to go right to the sources, the horse's mouth, right to the source. And, um, and really just being a blank page. And, and that's what brought me into my COVID journey and towards the end of it, as I said, I started to have these weird experiences like uh, at night, every evening around nine, nine thirty, ten 10 o'clock, I would just heat up like an oven, like felt like somebody, there was a stove burner in my chest and somebody turned it on high. And I thought, what is, I thought it was just menopausal hot flashes, right? <laughs> That's what I thought it was. And so this had been going on for months and I encountered a teaching through Dr. Pinkola Estes about how menopause can be a, a window for women to begin to have psychic or supernatural experiences because they're done with that part of their life where they're sowing so much of their time and energy to their children and their families. And so they have this opportunity for self-fulfillment and spiritual connection. And I, when I read some of that stuff, I started thinking, hmm, maybe this thing going on at me at night is not a hot flash. Hmm. <laughs> and then one night, my partner said to me, we were watching Wendy Kennedy, who you probably know, and just enjoying her. And my husband looked at me and he said, you know, maybe you could channel. And I, <laughs> I just thought, well, you know, at this point, I'm open for anything. <laughs> So uh, that's a yes, if that's something the universe wants me to do. And within hours, I began channeling. So in that COVID period when you were not well, I'm guessing the, the car business that came to an end in the end, there's a lot of things that were stripped away from you. What was the marriage? Did the first marriage end in the COVID era? Before, before COVID Just before hit. before COVID hit. Yeah. Um, my marriage ended... I sold the family business um, and began trying to start piecing together a little bit of a new life. And so I, I disconnected from, I'd had a lifelong relationship with Christianity and all my religious affiliations. And most of my singing and music career had been involved there. And so when my marriage came apart and I sold the family business, I just left all of that behind. I hung up my teaching career, my religious affiliations, and I just started over in a new a, a new home with a new partner and and began just letting everything be a blank slate and starting over, letting letting go of all of my ideas and construct and roles and beginning again. Interesting. Okay. Well, thank you for being so honest and sharing that journey as well. I mean, that's um yeah. Okay, so life changed pretty quickly at that point then when you started to channel because we've got a book uh, which yes. doesn't just come from nowhere. That's a lot of hard work to put something that, like that together. And, you, you know, you've got your website. Uh, your website is? TheJudahChannel.com. And there at my website, you can find the book and lots and lots of free resources. There's links to YouTube. We have hundreds of live um, really great channels chock full of all kinds of great material and one of the cool things about so one of the things that happened as i began developing this relationship with judah almost right away judah began connecting us with other beings so on any given evening when we're channeling together um we might be having pleiadians come or arcturians or syrians or or um other really amazing uh, people that have passed on like Edgar Casey or Helen Keller. Or, and, and so Judah is kind of like, we kind of laugh and say, Judah's like the Oprah, you know, who you meet her and you know, your life is going to completely change because she picked up the phone and gave you a call. And then once that happens, 
and you meet some of our friends, then every one of them that you meet is a game changer. So it's been a lot like that. Judah has just brought in so many different beings that have profound messages. And how was the book uh, put together then? I mean, who asked the questions? How does the channeling sessions work for yourself? Yeah, my husband and I sit together every night. My new husband and I, we sit together and we um, just open up the floor to whatever happens and we channel. And he asks great questions and Judah and the other beings give responses. So a lot of the question and answer portions of the book are from that. And the book, you know, I just sat for about six months and just channeled pretty much all day. Uh, three or four, five hours, as much as I could stand, I would channel and write the book. And um, it it was um, a real gift to me because it allowed me to process all of the stuff that was happening. Was that through creative writing or was that verbally or voice channeling? It, I just would sit at the computer and I would just kind of have a sense of what they wanted me to write and and I would just start typing and it would I would just feel a really warm um loving you know kind of high vibrational feeling as I would write and sometimes my perfectionism and my my old teacher self would kind of get hung up on the words and the the grammar and all that and and I, Judah gave me a way to edit even. So I could hold up my hand towards the screen, uh, towards a paragraph, and Judah would say, yes, that's finished. And then I would go to the next paragraph. Yes, that's finished. And go to the next paragraph. And Judah would say, no, read it again. (laughs) And so Judah Judah gave me these really cool, cool shortcuts for writing (laughs) that I appreciated. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Has Judah ever shown up in the past, do you think, in some other form? When you look back at certain scenarios, certain situations, ways that you handled things, ways that you maybe gave advice before, or maybe that own inner voice of yours, do you think Judah's shown itself, but not as it is now, but in some, do you think there was a gift there is what I'm trying to say? Yes, right. What Like, was Judah around before age 52 when she, he or she formally introduced themselves. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've thought back about it and there's like, you know, two or three incidences that I, I think were probably definitely Judah there with me. One of them was, um, after my divorce and all the insanity, you know, kind of coming up from that. Well, one day I was, um, I was on the car on the way to an acupuncture appointment and doing acupuncture was kind of brave. It might seem silly to say this for most people, but it was kind of brave for me because I had raised in a tradition where that was kind of ooh, a no-no, you know, that you might get demons or something if you went to acupuncture. So I was on my way to this appointment, and the I knew this acupuncturist to be really a, an amazing healer. And as I got in the car, this presence filled up the car. I was just caught up in this incredible state of bliss. And and it literally physically took my breath away. And I just felt something supernatural. I didn't know what it was, but I knew it was a confirmation that I needed to keep going to these acupuncture appointments. And so that was a time where I feel like Judah was really there. And when I would go to these appointments, I began to get caught up in a state of bliss as I would lay on the table with the needles in me. And it was a real you know, mind bender for me because it felt to me similar to times I had had in really high engaging corporate worship. And so that was kind of blowing my mind a little bit and it helped open me up to that there was just a whole lot there that I didn't know yet. Have you sort of fully left the religious side that you was a part of for so long in your life? I have, I have in the, in the last few years, I I completely unplugged from church life and it was, it was very sad for me um, because I had a lot of community and family there. And there were a lot of really good aspects of that life for me, but I knew that it was really important to my journey. Um, and, 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 and I've done it. And so it's been a process of 
you know, at first I kind of threw the baby out with the bath water and I just wasn't sure about this whole God and Jesus thing, you know, and, but now I've had time to kind of sort through all of that and um, come to a better place. But I do feel like for me and my children, overall religion was damaging for us in many sense. And how do your kids feel about, well, well, I'm guessing you must talk about it, but how do they feel about what mom's doing now then? They're they're all very excited and very supportive. And I imagine it's kind of weird, you know, to hear your mom, uh, some kind of weird voice coming out of your mom's body. And <laughs> and also it's a little bit of a head trip to, to hear the voice voices that seem so godlike, you know, through your mom, because your mom's just your mom, you know, but, <laughs> but they've been super, super supportive and cool about it. Beautiful. That's great. Yeah. It's always interesting just to hear different people's stories and uh, their experiences on the journey as well. That's, I mean, it can be so different to that. And what you've gone through there is uh, just a beautiful um, supportive experience, which is great, which I'm sure has just allowed you to bring more of the work through, which is, um, I, you know, it's just so accelerated what you've done in such a short time. Don't you think that? Don't you look back on it and you think, oh my God, how have I got to this point? so quickly super fast. yeah super fast super fast and and i really feel like i'm on a bullet train towards consciousness and and this is something i'll share in case anybody relates you know i didn't set out looking to become a channeler or a psychic or a medium i really was just looking for answers for my own life and to really be set free in my own uh mental emotional self and 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 live my best life and and be happy and i felt like enlightenment was was the the pathway for me to to achieve that and so that's the pathway that i set out for and the channeling was just something that kind of happened a happy accident that happened along the way so my perspective is for me personally channeling is only important to me to the degree that it helps me and other people to become more enlightened and so speaking to the your point about you know how so much happened so fast um, I kind of, here's a metaphor. I kind of liken it to this. If, if I, if my car was parked in the driveway and I wanted to get out and go somewhere and do something, but a tree had fallen over the driveway and I would be trapped or stuck in, not able to go out about living my life. You know, there's lots of different approaches that we take in life. So I could get out and yell at the tree or be mad at the tree or frustrated that wouldn't help me at all. I could, I could, you know, hire an expert to tell me about the tree and why it died and fell over my driveway. That's not going to help me. Um, you know, I could hypothesize about um, how I could get rid of the tree. And I could even take out my little hacksaw and saw a way at it. But what's so amazing about channeling and having angels and other enlightened cosmic beings in our life is they are like those guys, those big guys with the power chainsaws. And they can just come in and cut that tree up and move it out of the way so that we can get on about our process of enlightenment. And that's really what has happened for me. I mean, just so many mental and emotional constructs have just dropped away so quickly, so quickly, so quickly, because they're bringing in a supernatural power to get that work done. And I should mention as well that you're also a singer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's something you still do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I love to write. I have, um, I don't know, 30 or 40 published songs and um, I, I play piano and guitar and, and sing and yeah, and I, I, I love. Um, I, I just have a beautiful life in the sense that I'm free to make music however I feel to do it in my own studio and with my own friends. And yeah, that is great. great. I will link some of those um, tracks below in the show more description great. for this video. But if people are listening to this on a podcast, where would they find them? Is it YouTube the best way to find some of the music, or is it Spotify? Or I'm on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes as A N J I E Carpenter, C A R P E N T E R Hipple, Angie Carpenter Hipple. Yep. All right. Kind of all all over there. Yes. So, Judah, 
what and who is Tudor in a sense? How would you describe it? Because I think, is it more than one? Is it a group? And uh, how does it relate to you? Yes. So the way Judas describe themselves to me is they are a collective or a soul group, family group of angels. And there's about 350,000 of individual angelic souls within this group. And they move together as one entity, kind of like a swarm of birds, maybe that you'd see in the sky. And they, um, they're, they're super, super powerful. Angels have a, an incredible sense of um, justice um, and a lot of wisdom and love to offer. And they really work to connect people, and humans in the third and fourth dimension to higher dimensions, fifth through 12th dimension. So they're kind of like um, plugging, unplugging us from things that aren't working and plugging us into source and to our higher self and other guides. And they're they're very um, musical in nature. Um, they the name they told me they chose that name to represent themselves to me because in the Bible there was a tribe of of um, people in the Hebrew nation called Judah, and they were the really raucous, uh, praising, musical dancing uh, worshipers. And so they have explained themselves to me as being very musical oriented, their bodies being like almost like a calliope or um, an accordion. You know, it's like source just kind of breathes through them. And as they uh, breathe in source, they're just emanating sound, all this musical sound, 360 degrees around. And a couple of times in my life, I've heard heard them, and that's really profound. So what's the group's main focus, in a sense, then? Is it to promote or explore teachings around passion? Well, I think that their, their love and their passion is for... Passion. Yeah, their, their passion is for the creator and for us as souls to fulfill our potential the potential that the creator, you know, birthed us with. And so they're really all about just removing whatever it is that's hindering us from being our God self, from, from being the, these amazing pieces of children of God, children of the universe that we are. And for most of us, you know, that is our, the way we think, the way we feel it is our experiences that are hanging us up both in this life and in past lives it's our our attachments to you know our political stances or our attachments to our opinions you know one of the things i love that judas said early on is um if if a man is starving and all he has left is a sacred cow he better kill it and eat it you know, and, and a lot of us, we get so attached to how we think life should be. And, and we need to, we need their help to undo these ideas and things that aren't working for us and to really see the truth, the truth of um, the cosmos. And so they're super passionate about awakening and they're super passionate about helping people to be enlightened and really raising their vibration so that they can come up over the things that are hindering them and holding them back. How does it work for you then? So what is your process to connect with them? Well, it's it's kind of um, eerily simple. I literally can just drop right in. Um, I don't know how it happens. It's kind of miraculous within seconds. um, Sometimes my, my husband will call me from work. He's seeing a patient and he'll just give me their name and I can instantly drop in and just give him a response for that, for that person and tell them what I see about their physical condition and what's causing it. And, uh, and then I can come right back out. So I guess the easiest way to explain how it feels to me is it's similar to if you've ever been in the car and you're driving down the road and you decide to, um, you put it on cruise control. Um, and when you kick on the cruise control, you can feel it immediately lock into gear and begin accelerating. 
And so it just when I drop into that state, I just feel Judah kind of take the reins and I feel this acceleration. And then, and then when they're done, I just, it feels like a release, like a tapping of the brake. So are you kind of in the back seat then in a sense? I, I'm aware of everything going on, but I feel like I'm just observing. And I usually I can't remember it all just because there's such vast volumes of information that come through, but I am aware. It's not like I've disappeared and gone somewhere. So what makes them uh, unique then from other angelic groups? Because, I mean, I've um, interviewed a, a number of different channelers and they've all got their groups they work with. What's right. different about this group, would you say? Well, like I said, they are um, very musically oriented. Um, I, I was surprised to find out that they kind of answer or hail to Archangel Michael. Um, because I always thought of Michael as being more of a warring angel and a strategist. But in truth, they do answer to Michael and work with Michael. And so Michael does come through uh, quite occasionally. And they tend to be really authoritative and very um, justice oriented like Michael is. And they're very ex extroverted and super creative, um, almost kind of kaleidoscopic in their, their ways. It's like they're, they're constantly moving. And like when, when you turn a kaleidoscope, every, every tiny shift produces a different slightly different perspective and and they're very much that way they're they're very it's very important to them to facilitate relationships with other cosmic beings they're very comfortable with taking the back seat and allowing other entities to step in uh, because they understand the importance of connections and having experts and guides and different in different areas. For instance, when I, I first began to stumble into the edges of the Galactic Federation things, I didn't really know anything about it. Or, or, you know, I had heard that word thrown around and it sounded very Star Trek to me. <laughs> but um, Judah was very willing to kind of step aside and let some other beings like um, Syrians and Arcturians and Pleiadians step in because they had more expertise in working with the Galactic Federation. And so they, uh, Judah was happy to let them step up and guide. Now, my understanding of why I'm specifically channeling Judah is that I came incarnated into this life from Judah. I was one of the angelic souls in that collective. And so they have explained to me that I am one of them and therefore Judah is my, what is sometimes called an oversoul or my soul family. And that Judah is my future self or enlightened self. So when I'm channeling Judah, I'm, I'm basically channeling my higher self, my future self, my angelic self. If that makes any sense. It, I know it's all very weird. <laughs> no, it does. And when you've been tested in a sense f from a client or whoever's asking you a question and you're able to bring stuff through and you're like, where the hell did that come from? Right. Um, but I'm going to trust it. I'm going to go with the process. And to know that it's been so accurate in the end, because maybe you've checked up on what came from that um, information. Uh, how does, that, how does that make you feel that um, you're able to do this and uh, that it's so powerful and helpful to people? Well, it's really humbling. And, you know, one of the, it was interesting because be, from the very beginning, Judah always referred to me as the vessel. And I asked them to give me some explanation or understanding of that. And they, they said to me, you know, that I'm just, I've made myself like an empty container. You know, if you pour water into a container, it takes the shape of that container, whatever that container is. And, you know, the container doesn't matter. It's the water that you drink that refreshes you. 
And so they, they've asked me and I've been willing to just be a vessel, uh, an empty container for whatever and whoever come wants to come through that can benefit or bless someone else. Um, one story that was really cool and special for me personally was a, a channel that I did early on for a young woman. And in the channeling, I had this urge to sing over her in Spanish. And it seemed really strange, but I did. I, I just sang, te amo, te amo mi corazón. And I didn't know a lot of Spanish, but I sang what I felt prompted to sing. And um, what the words of what I was singing to her is, I love you. I love you, my heart. I love you, my heart. So after the session, she shared with me that her grandmother had been her best friend her whole life and that her grandmother had raised her and been heavily involved in her upbringing because her father had been imprisoned and that her grandmother called her Corazon. And so I was really stunned because I realized in that moment that by opening myself up to whatever would serve this beautiful young woman, her dead grandmother had come and sung her love and affection to her through, through my voice. And this was a big, you know, mind bend for me because I had been raised and believed that it was dangerous <laughs> to, to do that sort of thing. And there was nothing in me that was open to channeling the dead that was like witchcraft and oh you know but in that moment all of that changed for me because there was so much love present for this beautiful young woman and healing for her because she had hurt so much over losing her grandmother so all of my constructs just are continually being broken and and all i have to do is just stay open that's all you know isn't that incredible that you know you're channeling this I'll call them group, right? The, you know, <laughs> and uh, yet they're able to move aside and let her grandma come through, or they're yeah. connect, or somehow they're connected on un unknowable ways. It's all unknowable, yes. isn't it? Really, um, to be able to bring grandma through when really that collective is not—you wouldn't have thought anything connected with that particular soul lineage. Not at all. And I would have never thought that angels were friends with Syrians and and um, and mantoids and all of these other beings. But they're just all about whatever is going to bring life and love and joy and freedom for people. And really, and another cool um, example was I was channeling for a beautiful uh, woman and began to channel this being that introduced himself as Windy Mountain. And he did this really strong, powerful Native American chant and song. And then he talked about his, he was a Cherokee and, and some different things that he shared. And so later after the channel, I found out that this young woman and all of her family lineage were from the mountains of North Carolina where the Cherokee Indians lived. And um, so I, I never cease to be astounded, um, never cease to be. Um, and, and it's so amazing. Yesterday, I um, had been doing some more writing for a course that that uh, we'll be releasing soon to introduce, to basically tell people exactly how to develop relationships with angels and other cosmic beings. And, and I had written in the book uh, a part about Helen Keller and I, just parts of her life that were deeply inspiring to me personally. So I thought, well, <laughs> maybe should I just really put myself out there and see if maybe Helen Keller would come. And I, I thought about it a little and I thought, well, you know, souls, souls are souls and souls are eternal. And I believe souls never cease to exist. So let me just ask, I mean, what, you know, maybe, nothing will happen. So what? <laughs> so I did. I, I just sat down and invited Helen Keller to come. And sure enough, she came and it was so profound. And, and I just cried through the whole channel, just listening to her message. 
So you've kind of, you know, built this platform up from um, from scratch, I guess you could say, right? And yeah. how have you got yourself out there so far then? Is it mainly through the book? Yes, and also um, early on, um, just through a, mir a miraculous synchronicity, um, a young woman came to us who had just sold um, her business. She had an extraordinarily successful business in digital marketing. She had just sold it and was looking for something new to do. And her mother had raised her um, on channeling. She she had been an app fan of Abraham Hicks and others from the time that she was very young. And we met and there was just an instant connection and we onboarded her right away. And so my husband and I have both taken this perspective. Um, this is such a gift and such a miracle. We, we don't have the luxury karmically or otherwise of keeping it to ourselves. We feel like it is our duty to, to get this message out there. And, and I believe that that's part of why these beings are visiting me in particular is that they, they, they know that I'm going to be faithful and get this message out. And, and so we've committed that whether we spend a million dollars or make a million dollars, we are going to be faithful to what we've been given to do and get this message out there. And, and we're prepared to do that and we're doing it. Yeah. And then clients come to see you with all sorts of... Um issues and problems and health yeah. issues yeah yes he health issues relationship issues to talk to a loved one that um is passed over um but primarily we we were interested in really building strong mentoring loving relationships as as a mom and dad to people that that really want to get free and and get on the road to enlightenment and one of the things, another piece that's really unique for us is my new husband um, is a, a former um, follower of Osho, and he lived in India with Osho and also in Oregon for seven years. And so he has this unbelievable history, a, a real life experience of having sat at the feet of an enlightened man and having that man be a father and a caregiver and a, and a wisdom source for him. And so we understand how important it is to get around and be in the presence of enlightened people, whether that's th a voice coming through a channeler or, and, and so my husband and I have two different experiences. He had this incredible experience of actually getting to be in the physical presence of an enlightened being year after year. For me, my experience has been connecting with people uh, like through your program and other programs and listening to Eckhart Tolle and Dr. David Hawkins and listening to Icon through Louise and Wendy Kennedy and all these beautiful um, beings, enlightened beings that have basically been the the, the reason why I'm here today. I, I, I couldn't have done it without the internet as a resource. The internet has been my ashram, whereas my husband actually lived in one. <laughs> So, you know, we're both very committed to helping, especially any young people that are searching and, and wanting to really get on a spiritual path. So would you say there's a difference then between um, personal development, uh, self-help, psychology and um, spiritual pursuits? Yes, absolutely. And it took me forever to figure this out. And I'll sh share with you kind of in a nutshell what came to me. So what I found was in all the psychology, self-help, 12-step work that I'd done over the years, it was keeping me stuck. It gave me some help and relief in a lot of areas, but this is how it kept me stuck. It was based on the premise that there's something wrong with me and that I'm broken and I really need to be fixed. And also, self-help a lot of times is based on the premise that I'm missing something. I'm not enough. And so I need to add on something to who I am or what I'm doing in order to measure up and finally be happy. And so for me, neither of those things work. And I really believe that those things 
can give some relief, but in the end, they don't work because the truth is, this is what angels say. This is what source says. You're perfect exactly the way you are. You're not broken. You're a piece of God. You are an enlightened being who just maybe doesn't realize it yet. And there's nothing about you that needs to be fixed. There's nothing about you that has to be altered or changed or added to, to make you good enough, to make you worthy. And so the thing that, one of the profound things that I feel like Chuck and I offer is that we want, what Chuck taught me is, hmm, There's just rubbish and things that need to be moved out of our mind and our emotions. They're just stagnant, stale energies and their subconscious beliefs that we're not enough, that we don't measure up, all of those things. And we all have them. And until those subconscious beliefs are really pulled up by the root, nothing's going to work for us. And the power of angels is that what they do is supernatural. Energetically, they come in and they push out that old stuff. They just push it out. All right, then. So there is, I mean, I've always said this, that there's a big difference between getting a channeled reading and someone offering a psychic service in a there, yes, crossover, right? But this channeled reading is more of a kind of wisdom teaching, isn't it, in, in some respects? Yeah, so you know, there are people that I've, I've had a couple people that come to me that want winning lottery numbers, or they want me to tell their fortune, or they want me to tell them that it's okay that they're having an affair with, with someone else's um, spouse. And see, that's what Judah can't do because what Judah, Judah can't align with the egoic structures in our nature that are, that are keeping us bound up. You know, Judah's never going to say yes and amen and that's okay to something that's keeping us in bondage. But Judah can say, tell the truth and say, I understand why you want those winning lottery numbers because you feel afraid. You feel afraid that that life is not going to provide for you. And it was cool because one of the persons that came to me for that very reason, what Judah showed me is that she was a widow and, and really strapped financially. But the angel said to me, but we have a nest egg for her. We have a nest egg for her. And when I shared that, she said, oh, no, I don't have a nest egg. And it's true in the natural, in the third dimensional, she didn't have a nest egg in the bank. But the truth is there are angels who do have in the realms of heaven a nest egg for her. And they are never going to let her go without. She is always going to be provided for. And so that's why I can't give the lottery numbers. Because what's more important is that she be completely set free in this fearful, fearful place in her lower chakra that, that keeps her bound up thinking that there's just not enough. Well, sometimes we want things, to, you know, and uh, there's just no way to manifest it, no matter how hard we're going to work or what ideas we got, it ain't going to come right now. And that, that, that's annoying. Um, <laughs> You know, yes. Yeah. It um, is. And for others, it's just so easy for them, but they're on a different path. I guess you get that feeling sometimes that it's not fair, but yeah. I guess at some point in a timeline that's better for you, it will happen. But that's such a namby pamby way of saying it, really. It's just going to be that, you know, you're going to have the money that you need because you've worked for it and you've saved up for it in the future when, it, when you've got it because you've worked for it. Do you know what I mean? Well, one of the areas where Chuck really worked with me, um, my new husband, that was so crucial and important is that he never let me off the hook for this one thing. And that is this. He would always say, well, you're creating your own reality. This was really, really hard for me to accept 
I could accept that I was creating my own reality when things were going well for me and things were clicking and great things were happening. But when all the crappy stuff was happening, like being sick with COVID for two years, I did not want to tell the truth that I had created that. And so this took some really, really hard work. And it looked like this. At a point, I had to admit the truth that I was unhealthy because there were some payoffs for that. See, if I was sick, I didn't have to cook anybody dinner. I didn't have to go to work. People had to be nice to me because I was sick, you see. And there were some payoffs there. And they were very subconscious and very pressed down. But until I was willing to tell myself the truth, yes, I created this. And there are reasons why I created this. And there's a payoff in this for me. And when I was finally able to admit that and really come to a place of surrender where I could say, well, can I let go of wanting and needing to be healthy? Yes. Can I let go of wanting and needing to be unhealthy? Yes. Until I could accept either side of that coin, um, I wasn't going to get well. Yes, and I agree with what you're saying, but for some people, it is a struggle. That's right. I, you know, one of the big things, mantras that I've had through this whole process that led me up to Judah was, I don't know. I don't know became my mantra. You know, I, um, it was really freeing for me to say, I don't have the answers. I don't know. Mm. And I, I really believe that that makes a space when we can say that it makes a space for beings that are higher and wiser than us to come in with an answer. But as long as I feel like I have all the answers, then why would they bother? <laughs> Let's just touch on the law of attraction then, because that's a very common theme, isn't it? And do you think it's, do you think law of attraction in a sense and aspects of it are very misunderstood? You know, I, I love this question because I think you and I and so many of us that have been in this spiritual community are, are, feel, are feeling this way. Um, I feel like there's some areas of my life where I can really manifest things pretty quickly and, and it's pretty amazing. I've got some cool, really cool stories to tell about that. And then other areas where I'm just up against a brick wall. and um, and and I think all of us are are kind of you know up to here with the law of attraction stuff because we you know we do have split energies we have areas where it's working and areas where it's not so we really need answers but so let me share this with you this is a little game that Judah has uh, used quite a bit in channels and personal sessions and my husband and I use it a lot and it's been very powerful and it almost always produces some relief and um and and removes some resistance and and judah calls it the getting free game and it's sort of like this so f- like for instance in my life you know i shared earlier about the covid journey well so if if we take the law of attraction that at face value as we always hear it that means that somehow i've created this disease and i'm sick and it's been two years and I'm still here. And, you know, I've done all the meditating and all the surrendering and I've done it all, done it all, read it all. And I'm still here sick. So what's, what's going on, right? So this is where the getting free game has kind of helped me get unstuck. And it goes something like this. What I do through this game, Judah helps me look at both ends of the spectrum to just come to a deep place of accepting whatever is. And I have found that if I can come to a very deep place of acceptance, then at the very least, that that relaxes all of my fearful parts and it opens up a space where something good could come in. So in that particular uh, part of my story, this is how the Getting Free, free Game looked. I asked myself an over, over and over, Could I let go of wanting and needing to be healthy? Well, I would just say no. So the premise of the getting free game is you answer the question yes or no. 
and you answer it honestly. You don't answer it from your head or say what you think you ought to say. You answer it honestly. So Judah would say, could you let go of wanting and needing to be healthy? And I would say, no. Could you let go of wanting and needing to be healthy? No. <laughs> Could you let go of wanting and needing to be healthy? Well, maybe. <laughs> well, all right, maybe. And then and then we would work the other end of the spectrum. Could you let go of wanting and needing to be unhealthy? And my mind would say, what? I don't want to be unhealthy. And then if when I really thought about it, I thought, well, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I like uh, I like that I don't have to get up and go to work. I, I like that nobody's expecting me to pay the bills. Yeah. Could I let go of wanting and needing to be unhealthy? Well, there are some payoffs for that. So a lot of times working both ends of that, you know, and then and then you can come to a place of letting go of resistance and relaxing, letting the ego fearful parts kind of settle. And then some, then you can begin attracting something a little better. But as long as there's that resistance there, you know, nothing's happening. You're just hitting a brick wall, you know. And then we all feel that. We all have that experience. Yes, absolutely we do. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I guess what you're saying makes a lot of sense. It does. And uh, it's just being able to come to that space. Um, it's a, it's sounds, a real... sounds easy and I, I know you're not making it easy because you know you've had your own resistance to what you're saying but um it's, it's um it's a struggle isn't it it is and and you know i think that it's a it's a feeling of real powerlessness um and sometimes just accepting that place of powerlessness and then hopefully accepting that and really getting cozy with it you know can can allow a space for a power that's bigger than us to to come in and work on our behalf and and um and begin you know making a change in our circumstances and maybe when things show up sometimes we don't always have to take them but i don't think they show up without being a positivity in some way into our life and we can either say yes to it or no but you know they say there's no wrong answers or there's no right answers you know making a choice sometimes i'm not talking about a really complicated or life or death choice i'm talking just life choice you know should i move here should i do that you know blah 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 you know just you know mundane stuff but would make a difference in your life in some respects, right? That uh, maybe there's no wrong choice in 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 some of those light, lighter lighter subjects, and um, right, may, maybe uh, there's just different multi dimensional pathways. <laughs> Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? There's just different streams of like time that you could, if you went off in this time, you could have done this or this this. Actually, it is okay to. To, you know sometimes you know do you know we say like we get we r- rush into a marriage or a relationship and you say and, and it all works out right but you know you, it was so quick but it's just one of those it was meant to be you know mm-hmm. you, you chose to say yes in a sense yeah and one of my favorite channels from judo was um a channel in which judo said we're looking for people who will be like sunflowers and I spent some time after that channel kind of digging in, you know, thinking, what were they, what were they saying here? And sunflowers are what they call heliotropes. And they have a, an innate kind of instinct that they turn their face to follow the sun as it moves through the sky through the day. So they might start oriented toward the east in the morning, and then their faces are towards the west in the evening. And, you know, I think what Judah was trying to say is, there's a lot of shadows. There's a lot of darkness. There, there are a lot of difficulties for all of us. But, but, you know, looking towards whatever is giving us a little bit of light and life in the moment, that, that, that helps, you know, it's about where we, we put our attention, you know, the sunflower has this, you know, the sunflower is not slamming doors or shouting or, 
or doing this radical cutting off of people in their life or whatever. No, it's just a really gentle, gentle looking towards what is a little better, a little more life-giving, uh, feels a little mm, easier, a little bit lighter. You know, sometimes that's all we can do. Maybe that's just taking a nap or um, just eating, making a little bit better choice about what we're eating or whatever. But whatever we can in the moment, turn our face towards that better choice. And, um, you know, and, and, and what's cool about sunflowers is they can grow to be like 10 feet tall. They're massive and they have tons of seeds that people can eat and get life from. And, you know, so it's, I think for me, the law of attention is a good balancer, an important balancer for the law of attraction, you know, because the law, a lot of times the way for me, why the law of attraction is not working is because of where my attention is, because whatever I'm giving my attention to is, is growing. So if I'm giving lots of attention to the news or politics or whatever, I'm just not going to feel good. There's just no way around it. Yeah. It, and giving that my attention, it's just never going to make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, why is that? Do you think? Well, um, you know, I don't know if you know about Dr. Emoto's exper uh, experiments, but he put um, three, he had three jars of rice and he put water in each one. And for uh, 30, 60 days, he would each day look at one jar and say, I love you. I love you. I love you. And then he'd ignore the, the second jar and the third jar. He would say, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. And at the end of that time of his experience, the first jar that he spoke love to had fermented and was still healthy. The second jar had turned green and black and moldy and the third jar as well. So there's a principle there that if we can, can give our loving attention to what we want more of in our life, then that, that produces something good and the other things we need to either ignore them altogether, or, or if we're giving them negative energy, you know, we want those things to die. We we want less of those things. So if we can ignore them or not engage our negative energy with them, that that helps to clear out some of that. Okay. Well, thank you for that. And what does Judah say about uh, the reasons why we're here? Because I know you've got some of these um, chapters in your book, but I just wanted to touch upon some of those chapters as well, because there's some fascinating chapters in the book. Well, do you do we want to channel about it or do you want to hear some answers on those? Good question. Um, let's channel about it. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So before we start any channeling, just um, just explain the process and how it works for you as well. You know, it's just so simple that I just drop right in, close my eyes and drop right in. Um, I just stay really, really open to them. So I, I can do it at any moment of the day. Uh, ask them about anything, anytime, any place, and they will come. Yeah, in the, in the beginning, it was kind of embarrassing because I could just be anywhere and this big booming voice would come out. But um, <laughs> now they seem to have regulated that a little bit better. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't have any rituals for protection or prayers or anything like that. I just totally trust them to be the gatekeepers. You know, they're the bouncers at my club. You know, they're not going to let anybody in that shouldn't be there. So I, I don't even worry about that. I, I trust them to vet anybody that's coming through. Okay. Well, thank you for explaining that. And I'll uh, let you connect. Okay. Hello. Hello, Kevin. So good to meet you. Thank you for this time. And, and and the gift of your attention and energy. We thank you for, for your ongoing attention and energy towards non-physical beings such as ourselves and giving, uh, giving us a voice to speak something better into the earth, to bring some good Good news, some good news for goodness knows you all need some good news. And so we give you thanks. We sure do. We sure do right now. Yes. Um, 
Yeah, we we love the um. Well, a lot of us love the the mainstream news. Well, no, we don't love it, but it's just you know we're addicted to the news, aren't oh, we? Oh, oh, yes, yes. You like the pain and the drama, yes. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. That that is for sure. The more suffering, the more we're alive, right? <laughs> I guess. How how may we serve you today? What is on your mind? Oh, well, I think you probably already really know. I've I've got uh, some questions for you, but I mean, it's all in the moment yes. right now, really. Um, I'm trying to like. Okay, for the audience, let's let's take a question for the audience. Age-old question, why are we here? <laughs> well, well, you are here because you chose to be here. You you are are trying on all sorts of things. You you are like a a teenage girl who who goes to a a a, a store that ha has amazing clothing that, that that's far more expensive than what she can afford, but yet she gathers up as many things as possible and takes them to the dressing room to try them on. And she has a great time doing it, hopefully, and, and may find one or two things that really suit her. And this is much of what it is like for you. My dears, you come into this life to experience different things, to try on different things, to say, well, this, this I like, this is fun. Oh, this, this doesn't suit me at all. And, and well, this makes me feel more of my true self, or, or this makes me feel uh, 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 like I'm a little more than what I thought I was. And so all of your experiences are similar to this. And, and there are no goals, there is no place to be, nothing that needs to be done. You're, you're beautiful and perfect. You are an expression of all that is. You, you are glorious and authoritative in your own right. We are not here to tell you what to do or how to do it. We are simply here to support you in being your amazing and beautiful selves, what you are. We love what you are. We support that. Now we may point to this or that and guide you in a in, in a bit here or there. Uh, uh, maybe point out a, a a a trap or a hole in the road. But mostly, we're just here to empower you. And so you are here to do and be whatever you want to be. And if you don't know what that is, that is fine too. You may be many different things in your lifetime. And this vessel has been a wife, a mother, a school teacher, a waitress, a housekeeper, a, 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 a musical star on a stage with thousands of people. And now she is, well, a surprise, surprise. She is 52 and she's going to be a channeler now for Cosmic Friends. <laughs> So, so, so what? <laughs> the culture tells you, you better figure it out. And once you figure it out, you better stick to it and get about it. Well, we disagree. Life, my dear, is a big sandbox. You see, you see, there was a shift that happened with this vessel. We will share it because it may help someone. She spent her first many decades of her years as a spiritual seeker trying ever so hard to figure it out. Now, the difference is she is just like a child in a sandbox or on the beach. And she just sifts and sifts and sifts through different spiritual ideas and teachings and things that she hears. She sifts and sifts and lets the sand fall through her hands. And who cares if she is just a child? She doesn't need to build anything of what she learns or finds. Well, maybe she'll build a sand castle, but the tide will wash it away. What is not, it's not important what she builds with all the grains of truth and wisdom and sand. The, all the beings that are speaking through her are giving her these grains of truth and wisdom and, and others like you as well. But it does not matter if she builds anything with it at all. For the tides of 
and sands of time will only wash it all away, my dear. So you can't mess it up. What is important is that you play, that you play, that you enjoy what you're doing, that you enjoy your life and don't take anything too seriously. Well, we're good at doing that. This is a horrible disease. (laughs) It it will ruin your spiritual life and make it a burden and droll. Yes. Well, like I say, we're very good at doing that, aren't we? Um, (laughs) Yes. 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 (laughs) Okay. Well, that's. Thank you for that. Um, You're welcome. You know, there's so many obviously different channels that I've interviewed. And I've always asked the question when the person's in the sort of more conscious state, you know, where's the discernment? But um, what what makes you different and right compared to the others that I've brought through, spoken to? Well, the difference is that we don't pretend to know it all. We understand that we are just one of many, many myriads of cosmic beings that are full of wisdom and enlightenment. And we are only one. We are one grain of sand on the beach of the universe. And yes, we have our own reflection of God, our own peace to offer, but we don't feel the need to know it all. And we are growing and expanding just like you are growing and expanding. And yes, we have a little more light and understanding than this vessel and perhaps some others. But we are not the end all be all and we don't need to be. And how are we different? Well, 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 we're just enjoying it all so very much. <laughs> and, and, We just want to do our part, that is all. It does not feel like work to us at all. You see, we and other angels, we we are teachers in a sense, and we are guides, but we don't get tired and we don't fall asleep. and, 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 And we simply want to help to raise your vibration up so that you can really enjoy this ever so much more and feel better and to you what is raising vibration i mean uh, some people will say well that's a bit word salad but <laughs> it is <laughs> yeah yes. but what you know well, <laughs> go ahead please. well it is until you experience it for instance this vessel when when we came in the beginning and still at times now she 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 feels like a lightning bolt has gone through her body and her body is full of energy and sometimes even her teeth vibrate and rattle uh, uh, and 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 it is this vibration you are speaking of that 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 seems like it has become a a meaningless meme we are talking about life force life force energy you see when babies are born they come out screaming and full of chi life force energy and their their skin is so pink and they, you can feel so much life emanating from them. They breathe deeply from their bellies. Uh, what has happened to you all? The life force is, is disseminated by all the stressors and, and the, the, the negative energies in the culture and constructs of the matrix in which you live. And we want to just help lift you up above some of that we want to 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 if you are a ship we want to to come and find the ballast the things that's way that are weighing you down and toss it out toss it overboard to lighten your load you see we want to set you afloat upon the sea of consciousness for let's pretend for a moment, Kevin, that you or, or your viewers, that you are, are like a, a great and grand cruise ship. 
But if the grand and great cruise ship of you is parked on the dry earth, you will go nowhere. You will only feel a stuck. And no matter how great and how grand you are, you will go nowhere and you will not be able to transport anyone to a better place. And so, and so we want to, to, to draw you out into the sea, the vast sea of consciousness, which is the unfailing and never ending love of the universe, of all that is, every drop of the ocean being a drop of love. And once you are there, you may float. And then to move upon that water feels completely effortless, does it not? And you can convey uh, uh, many tons uh, 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 of pounds, uh, 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 innumerable weight and cargo. You may move effortlessly through the water because now you are afloat upon the very heart of universal consciousness, of love, of life, of all that is. And that is all we want to do, my dear, is to draw you off the dry earth, out, out into the sea. Yeah, and we can, uh, as um, you kind of channeled into the book as well, that um, uh, Angie's published, you know, rewrite your story as well. We can all rewrite a story at any time as well. It's, we're not stuck with a particular life outcome, are we? Exactly. For instance, one of our little soapboxes is the way people <clears throat> talk to themselves about their, quote, failed marriage or their, quote, divorce. We really don't like these words. It's, it's very appropriate to rewrite the story and simply say, we had a parting of ways in order for us to move on to the next part of our spiritual growth and our personal journey. Why categorize it as a failure? And why continue for decades afterwards to call yourself a divorced person in reference to a past happening? That's not of any benefit to you or anyone else. Let's move this then to imagination. How important is imagination? Imagination, we emphasize this, and it is important because everything is created first in between our two ears, you see. In, in the realm of angels, we think the thought and it manifests. We think it and it happens. We think it and it happens. And there is a reference in scripture to this. It says, before you even call my name, the creator speaking, I have answered. And that is how it is with angels. If you don't remember anything else to, we say today, we ask you just to remember to ask for our help. <laughs> we are like uh, Santa's elves. But we are sitting around in the workshop with nothing to do because all the children have forgotten to make out their wish list. Uh, they don't believe in Santa anymore. That is how the situation is at this time. Hmm. Yeah. So you see, if you can just be a little childlike in your faith and perspective and simply make out a wish list and surrender it to us, then we can get busy filling your order. But if you forget to ask, we won't interfere. Well, who are people giving it to when they give their wish list to the, when they say, I'm going to give it to, to the universe? Is it still yourselves or is it? Well, if you're not sure who to ask, if you haven't really developed a relationship with your higher self yet or with the powers that be, you can just throw it out there and say, if there are any angels or, or beings of higher vibration than me, 
enlightened beings who can respond, these are my requests. But see, it is it is like a cell phone. You 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 have a number perhaps, and you dial it up. That's a good analogy. So even the name you've given for yourself um, really is just like an email address to connect to you. It's not really your name. Exactly. Maybe you've never ever spoken to Judah or Archangel Michael or Raphael or a Pleiadian. But you know that they might be out there, and so you just dial up their number, and on faith, you send a text or leave a message, and you will find that they will respond. Right, right. So the block is, it's, it, see, many of you are, are like people who have put a, a, a spam filter on your phone. You've put a block on the phone, uh, to to filter out all the angels and enlightened beings that are trying to communicate with you. You see, the tragic flaw of humanity is they don't believe in what they cannot see. Well, but yes. you call people all the time on your phone not knowing how the cell phone works. You don't know how the connection is made, but you trust that it will work. So do the same with us. Just throw out a name, Judah or, or Michael or, or whomever you happen to have some reference to. Dial them up. Send them your request. And you might be amazed at the responses you will get. So you're saying that just write a few points down and that would help you in present moment manifestation. Absolutely. And if it makes it more concrete for yourself. You may even text yourself a message. This is my message to the angels. I need X, Y, and Z. Okay. And hit send. I'm doing that as soon as I get that off here, I tell you. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you can always send them to this vessel, and she will certainly add our loving intention to your requests. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's some things that maybe wouldn't manifest as we would maybe want them to be. Um, that is true. You are right. It's not in your. It's not in your best interest. Well, that is a very wise thing you have said because you have a choice there. You can ruminate and be angry at the powers that be for not manifesting what you've asked for, or as you said, you can make the choice to. Well, say, mm, that must not be what I need right now. And so I'm going to put my attention here instead. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult sometimes, isn't it? Because some things that we want to manifest, right? They're just what we may look at as small things. And then you think to yourself, you know, but, <laughs> you know, you buggers won't give it to me. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, we aren't afraid of your anger. So we would rather you rail at us a little bit and vent your feelings than to cut off communication with us. Because, you see, we're in this for relationship. You see, we're not machines. We have souls just like you. And when we come around, we're coming around because we like you. And you may not want to hear that, but part of the reason why we're here in this relationship with this vessel is we think she's a little kind of cool. We like some things about her. We like her creativity and her love for people and, and her musical abilities and so on. And we knew that she was willing to work with us. And, and so just reach out, know that you all have angels. We have shared this before. We'll share it again. The ratio of angels to humans is two to one. So, see, the odds are in your favor if you put us to work. But we don't want to continue being like elves in the workshop twiddling our thumbs. So, please, please put us to work. Um, yeah. It's hard to imagine, like, you know, if you're existing out of time and um, what that really means to how long that you've been 
doing this service. Yes, we understand that. We understand that. And and this vessel... Does it matter? Uh, was, I guess it doesn't matter, but... Yes, yes. Well, sometimes you can even say to us, "We're." I'm having a hard time trusting that you're really there. So can you please... Show me that you're there. And this is one of the reasons why for this vessel has been particularly stubborn and egotistical in her, her lifetime. That's a long story. She wanted to be a star and be worshipped. <laughs> and you see, very stubborn and egotistical. So for her, we have had to give very definitive a physical, visceral manifestations of our presence in order for her to be assured that we are here. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. And this comforts her. Yes. Well, there's obviously, as she said in this interview, there's uh, some sort of soul alignment on a deeper level where she's, uh, you know, has and is connected to this group that she's actually working with and she's a sort of manifested in this uh understanding <laughs> um and uh, taken on a pretty difficult task actually probably um and i thank her for doing that so and yourselves as well so in the book as well there's the chapter the answer to every problem and in a yeah. nutshell as i call it what would that be <laughs> love <laughs> Well, there is an answer to all things, and the answer to all things is found in this. In the higher dimensions, in the 11th and 12th dimension, and it, it souls, individual souls, enter a place where they are completely at rest. There are no more problems, no more issues. There's, there's no, no goal, nothing that needs to be done. All is at peace. And, and one is so expansive that, that one feels as if one is just the ocean. So now, now see, you view yourselves as a drop, a drop in the ocean. But in higher dimensions, there is just a state of being, of existence. And yes, love is probably a close, the closest word that you can find. It's really a state beyond words, but it is just bliss and beingness and ease. And in that place, you are ineffable. Nothing bothers you. There's no resistance of any sort whatsoever. And, and, and on your path, as you work towards becoming a fifth dimensional being, you will get glimpses of this. And if you have enough glimpses of it, you won't want to go back to, to, to the old way of being. And this is part of what we want to do. We, we want to give you a little taste a little taste of heaven, kind of like Edmund in Narnia. Uh, he was given the, the, the Turkish delight and it kept him coming back. Well, we're not the wicked witch, obviously, but we want to give you a taste of something, of heaven, of life, of love, of bliss, of ease and peace and joy. We want to give you enough of a taste of it through our presence and our messages that you will keep coming back towards it. You see, and that, and in that way, we can help you develop some positive momentum. Now, there's a lot of talk about uh, humanity moving from a 3D experience to a 5D experience. What's your take on that? Okay, well, what we like to do is make things very simple because all of these concepts can be be complicated and and become, as we said, meaningless memes that don't. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's break it down. Okay, so let's pretend that you and the vessel and maybe some other viewers are together walking down the city street. So in 3D, all of you together walking down the street are having similar experiences, 3D being the, the concrete 
reality of what you can see, feel, touch, taste, and smell. So you are feeling the concrete under your feet and the buzzing of the cars going by. You are seeing the lights changing. You are hearing the people talking and the noise of the traffic. You are seeing the high-rise buildings. Maybe you're feeling a little breeze blowing. This is your 3D reality, and you are all experiencing it probably almost the same way. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's talk about 4D. 4D is the realm of thought and emotion. So all of you there again on the street, let's say one of you is a, a, an architect. And because of your perspective, your thoughts and emotions, your experience in life, you are probably looking at the high-rise buildings and thinking about their frames and how they were made. And perhaps another is a school teacher and sees a child getting close to the road and, and is afraid that they're going to be hurt. And maybe the police officer amongst you is noticing a shady character skulking around in the alley. And... Maybe another uh, is a pickpocket and they are only focused on the pockets of the people walking up and down the street. You see how everyone's, everyone's person, personality, their egoic structure, their experiences, thoughts and emotions are shaping how they're experiencing 3D reality. So one of the things we want to do is to broaden your perspective and take away the roles and ways of thinking that are keeping you limited in your focus. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So now let's talk about this weird uh, feed 5D concept. Okay. So each of you, again, walking down the street within you, within your physical third dimensional body, is your it's the house for your soul your soul is the fifth dimensional part of you it is the part that existed before you were born on a such and such a date to such and such a parents in such and such a place it's the part of you that will still exist when you die and you shed your physical body it is the part of you that has likely lived many 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 lives and had vast experiences throughout the cosmos okay so how do you be a five how do you tap into that 5d soul part of yourself now in the moment and how does that transform you and make your life different well then walk down the street with us as a 5d being and you have this uncanny sense that all of this is an extension of you and you are part of it all and everyone. And it's all connected in some way. And you might look at the buildings and as you look at the buildings and think for a brief moment about the people working inside, all the people inside suddenly feel refreshed in their work. Or you glance at the child standing too close to the traffic and suddenly the child turns and runs away back towards its mother laughing. You see. Or perhaps you notice the, the shady character in the alley who suddenly has a change of heart and decides to abandon their wicked plan. You see, 5D beings are enlightened beings and they have the ability to, to shift and change whatever's going on around them. They emanate enough high vibrational power and light, the essence of life, the essence of energy to, to shift the atmosphere in the place in which they are. Does that help? And the way that you get from 4D being to a 5D being is you begin to loosen your grip on your perspectives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you for all that explanation. Fascinating. Absolutely. It's a different take uh, on it. So thank you for just uh, yeah sharing that. So uh, I know we're almost at the end. I just want maybe one more question, right? Um, Please. Yeah, yeah. Your... Thank you.
what I found tra- interesting in the book was there was the quote of, um, well, in a sense, it was saying like doing nothing. Cause that was what the chapter was about. Yes. Um, and the, you know, what comes from that space. So just very briefly, if you want to just go through that, um, that idea. Yes, absolutely. So human, you've heard the phrase, Human beings, we are human beings, not doings. But of course, human beings are busy doing all sorts of things. And all this doing has the effect of leaving them very disconnected from their soul, the eternal part of them. You see, where where we are from, there are, there is no task. There's no time pressure. There, there's no expectation. There's no need for a particular outcome. We are simply doing what we are passionate about and what we enjoy. We're simply doing whatever we're doing from a state of being at rest and at ease. And so do, to do nothing is, is a, a very important skill. If you can allow yourself to be bored, if you can allow yourself to take your hands off things that aren't working in particular, And just give it a rest. Most things work out on their own in the course of time with very few exceptions. Unless you are in immediate physical danger, doing nothing is always an option. And it is actually an action. To take the action of inaction can be a very valid choice. Well, that's true. I mean, Even that, yeah. farmers understand, a good farmer knows that after so many years, you need to allow the ground to lay fallow for a time. And so they will not plant at all for a season in order to give the ground time to be replenished. Well, thank you. So we're obviously in a time of great change right now. And when I used to channel back in 2016, I wrote a book and get to publish that book one day um and it always used to talk about there was a a change that was going to be um coming in the not too distant future there was a great great changes in the world going to happen but it, it also said to me it was never the end so you know you go on any social media platforms right now there's a lot of talk that we're already maybe in what we may look back on as um or the start of conflict and, you know, dare I say it, World War Three, maybe in that timeline. Now, I know all timelines can be changed, right? But um, whatever, if there, if there was, you know, a small-scale conflict, and I, this is why I don't believe it's going to be, it's definitely not the end. But um, it, that energy is about, what is your take on that? We have an answer for you. First, you must understand that every channeled message, even from source himself or herself, is a message about possibilities and the possible trajectories. And yes, we can tell you what the likely possibility, possible outcomes are going to be based on the current trajectory of the collective conscious. Which can change. That is correct. So it's sort of, let, let us explain first. So it's kind of like this. Let's pretend that you are on the couch this evening and your work day is done. There are some possible outcomes for you. You might watch a little television. You might go to bed early. You might uh, order Italian food. Or you might even go down to the airport and get on the plane and fly to to, to California. Okay, some of those outcomes are more likely than others, right? Okay, so let's talk about possible outcomes. Yes, there is possibility for World War III, most certainly. And... We co- we're going to tell you what the ultimate goal is from the level of source. 
There will be a time when human beings who currently live in third dimensional physical bodies will collectively over time, one at a time, hundred and thousands, and, 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 and there will be a rate of acceleration, which is already happening, but eventually the entirety of humanity will become enlightened 5D beings and their bodies will become very heavy to them at that point and very cumbersome. And so like the Pleiadians and other races, humans will begin to exist collectively in angelic light bodies. We say angelic, not because you will be angels, but, but that is the closest frame of reference that you have. Okay, so, so you will be so enlightened as a collective race at that point that physical bodies will be heavy and cumbersome, and so you will shed them in exchange for a more etheric, angelic light body. And that will be across the board for all humans. Now, it's not going to happen instantaneously. It's going to happen over a course of time how long it takes will depend upon the consciousness of each individual and their contribution. Is it possible that there will be a third world war between now and what we are speaking of? Yes, it is a possibility. But one of the reasons why we're really stepping it up with our, vis our visits, our messages, with allowing so many different beings to speak is, is we, are, we are throwing everything we have, all of our resources towards this, your success and towards diverting you away from these potentials. Yeah, because some hosts won't even want to talk about it, you know. Um, within this field, I mean, it's like, it's, you know, it's the un yeah. un untalked about subject, but I think, I think that's our own limitations, really to being in shared reality. I mean, let's be real. Well, this, this vessel has nothing to lose but her reputation, and she really doesn't have a reputation. No, no. So. Well, no, I mean the hosts of other shows. That's what I mean. They don't want to go there because they think, oh, you're going to bring a negative in it. Yes. But yes, yes. Well, we were not asking. You see, when you look towards the sun, it doesn't mean that you're in, in denial that you're in some sort of state of childish pretending that things aren't, aren't like they are. No, they just or don't want to go there. Head. That's what I'm saying. I know, but they just... It means that you are, are giving your determination to expecting a better outcome and understanding that part of the way you create that outcome is by looking towards what gives life. So... Yes, that is a possibility. Yeah, yeah. That is, I mean, I've met channelers, you know, where the humans just get right in the way and we're not answering that, Kev. They're not answering that. I'm not. They're not. <laughs> um, yes, I've seen. I've seen and and you know, yeah, what you're saying is it's, it's avoidable. It, this is thing, this, this, you know, and, and that you're coming through as many as you can or, or you are. Yes, you're putting the energy to come through even in this to. to yes, it's all avoidable. And and. um and maybe and, and there are it, it there are show yes yes and uh, we want to say this as well kevin we want to tell you how important what you're doing is and we're not saying this to pat you on the back we just want to give some reference here there are our shows on the tell of vision we always call it the tell of vision because we want you to wake up and understand that everything you watch and bring in through your eye gate is reinforcing to you a vision of what could happen and so everything that is coming through the screen is a possible outcome. And there are people, very creative people, who are predicting a certain potential outcomes. For instance, The Handmaid's Tale. Mm -hmm. It is a very specific and possible outcome. It is within the realm of possibility. So it's very important that enlightened people step up in the media now and begin to communicate a, and tell a vision of a better outcome, not in a Pollyanna, ignorant sort of way, but with purpose and intention.
and authority. Well, maybe that's my my role. Maybe that's why I want to do. Maybe that's why I want to do the news. Cover the news that people in this in this right. field don't want to watch. So I'm not watching the news; it's too negative. But cover it as it is. But then get something you know a group like yourself through to look at the deeper karmic reasons. And well, and if you'd like, we can step off into politics for a moment. Today is election day, and. We are deep enough into the time frame of this election and this election day that there is a projected outcome. Mm. And it is not pleasant, and it will be a disappointment to many. Mm. And it it will be, it has the potential to really discourage truth-telling and enlightened people. So listen, listen up. So what we are looking for is you must understand that an eagle needs both a right wing and a left wing to fly. An eagle cannot fly with just one wing. And so we are asking enlightened people to give up their polarization and the duality of their alliances. And we are asking you to come up into a 5D place and begin to love all people and cast your vote in the realm of heaven with angels and other cosmic races who are here giving you assistance. We are throwing everything we have towards you to source you and resource you. And so, so give us your agreement, please. So you see... You might have a preference for the blue team or the red team. That is okay. But there is a place that is even higher than that, which is a place in which you have no intention but to see love and truth and enlightened authority come into position and power. You see, there are other cultures, such as the Syrian culture, who has power structures and political structures in place but they feel very differently there about those power structures because the people in power are completely enlightened and they are only motivated by love and what is best for the Syrian race. And so no one there fears the governmental power structure, you see. They love and appreciate the governmental power structure. But humanity is not there yet. There is still a lot of negative, powerful uh, entities at play. And most of them are unconscious and unaware of what they are doing. And so in that, you can be like the Christ and you can say, I forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. But yet you don't want to play ball with them. So there is a if if this political game is a football game, a red team and a blue team, come up into a place of rest and understand it is just a game. It is a game in the matrix. The game will play itself out. There will be a winner and there will be a loser and there will be good plays on both sides. But ultimately, the game will be over, and it is just a game. You see, where you get into trouble is when you you insist upon an alliance with the red or the blue team, and if your team doesn't win, you are disappointed. And if you're really, really attached in the 4D realm of your thought and emotions, your team is a part of your personality and who you are, and you can't let it go. And you can't even have a beer with someone from the other team after the game. And then you have lost what makes you a human, your capacity for compassion and love. And I should just say this, and please, I'm going to have to keep it brief right now. I do appreciate all the long answers. They, They mean a lot to people, right? To move away from any timeline that we don't want and some of the, the words that we've used today, what's the one thing we can do to move away or help to try to help to contribute towards moving away even if we can't cause it to we can try to do our best to do that what what is that one thing we can do or try to do be in the moment and in this moment turn your face towards 
the closest thing in your immediate environment that is in agreement with your deepest part, the deepest part of your heart. Mm. Even if it is as small as walking outside to get a breath of fresh air or, or drinking a cup of warm tea or calling your mother, whatever it is that gives you life, whatever it is that, that, that is, feels in alignment for your soul, trust your soul, do that thing. And then the next thing, and then the next, and then the next, and forget about yesterday and forget about tomorrow, but make the choice that is most aligned with your soul in this moment. Hmm. Okay. That's very powerful. Thank you so much. So much to ponder about there. I, I, I really love your, the energy that, that this group represents. And um, thank I thank you for arranging this, even though, uh, yes, things are, are, are um, you know, always, uh, always in motion, aren't they? So there's always lots going on in the background, but I do appreciate you coming on. So thank you so much for that. But let me, as, as, Di as Diane, where's Diane coming from? Sorry. As <laughs> there's a future girlfriend, uh, as um, Angie, right. I do apologize for that. Let me, like, yeah. As uh, Angie, um, comes back now and you're back already i don't know what i'm saying this for because you're back already you, you know you surprised me because you just you just you're just there right yep, one minute right there, one minute there's this there's this <laughs> voice right that that's totally totally different from you right as you said it would be and the next minute there you are right <laughs> <on my back. laughs> right yeah that's impressive i love that group do you know that i love them i I'm, I'm not surprised you said come on kev let's get them through right and you're right that was um enjoyable i mean i put some of those questions in there you know because i think you know if someone to begin with is coming coming here just to you know great questions yeah well yeah but i mean there was something very deep about that channel that's why i kept it kept it going so thank you so for those listening back on the podcast your website is the judachannel.com that's Judah with an H, J U D A H. The Judah Channel dot com on TikTok, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We've got loads and loads of free stuff on YouTube. Please go on and subscribe and and like and and share. We've got lots of light language transmissions for your health and all kinds of things on there. I love your website. I'm going to say that I watched it, uh, watched the video animation in the background and stuff. You know, with the clouds and everything else. I was like, you know, that's just the right tempo that's just the right design for this type of material so uh hats off to that person in the background because i'm just thinking it must be them that's yeah, yeah that, that's put it together yeah well part one of the things that makes us slightly different is my personal vision is that i really want to take channeling mainstream i want the average housewife and young mother yeah i i want the the average uh oprah winfrey listener to to be into what's happening here because we've got to break out of this little tiny culture well, of, it's always of been like that for a while the, the channel yeah, culture no, has we're gonna but break out and go mainstream with well, this abraham hicks did she did it all you know by herself in a sense but with the help of big name people like oprah winfrey in the end and but but, she, but even before oprah she was well known and if she can do it you definitely can do it I can, and I'm I'm going to. I'm going to be faithful to that. And I love Esther and Abraham, and I deeply appreciate them. Yeah, they're on their own journey, but yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So, well, thank you. I think... Well, we're so grateful, and I hope you feel deeply encouraged. I want you to come I did to the buy that last message. Yeah, yeah. No, come come to our mountain house and take a vacation, or and anytime you need something, we're here for you. We're going to be supporting you and what, sending what you was lots that, of love. What was that word you used there? What, vacation? <laughs> vacation. Yes, come and what have a vacation. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I uh, do plan to maybe uh, head back to the UK at some point in January because I've. Uh, I didn't think I could travel, um, but I think I might be able to because I'm obviously going through uh, a green card process right now, which is a highly recommended process. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, so we're gonna keep that close to our heart and just yeah, see it's that all whole good. Thing look, look, I, I sympathise with anyone through. going through the same thing. I really understand what what they go through as well. Um, but yes, uh, no, thank you for the offer. Uh, 
and I might take up. Who knows, man? I'm sure I pass across. Yeah. But just, just what you said there. I, I'm sure you've got the ability to do that. And love to do that for you. We're uh, not just saying it. We mean it. <laughs> I know. I know. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you know what that message, what the the messages that came through at the end there, um, they were very powerful. So thank you for coming on. It's our pleasure. Thank you.